Madam Speaker, I have to say, my girls told me, tell the Speaker how much we admire her. Maybe you couldn't tell my girls are Democrats. <laughs> You just heard from John Boehner, who uh, used to be a Republican House Speaker, and uh, he's celebrating Nancy Pelosi, yes, a Democrat, also a House Speaker, who will no longer be House Speaker because Republicans are now in charge in the House. Uh, but he was known for being a crybaby, and he's really living up to his expectations here. Now, we've got more from his speech, which we'll get to in just a moment. But before we do, it's important for you guys to understand why he's known as the biggest crybaby. Let's watch. I spent my whole life chasing the American dream, providing for the safety and security of the American people. My God, it's important. Buenos dias a todos. See Madam Speaker Takara, may she put a box of tissues uh, down here just in case, which is, I don't know, we'll see how I do. You know, I've had a, a few years now to reflect uh, on my time uh, and what it meant to me to work under this dome. Uh, it was the chance to learn from people that I admired. So look, I. I have no problem with men who cry at all, right? It's just when, it's not even about men, it's about anyone who cries in like, for nothing. Like, I don't, I like, know what, why. why was he crying so okay, much? First, let's note for the record that he is the original Jordan Peterson. Okay, like anything at all. Would you have a <laughs> sandwich? What has happened to you, man? What do you mean, do? <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> look, I, you give me a, a a good movie, I'll cry, no problem, all the time. My kids know that, like when it gets to a touchy uh, moment in a movie, they'll go like this to see if I'm crying. Okay, totally. when we're watching Totally, Christian's other, okay. a softie, he cries too. Like there's nothing wrong with men crying, that's, that's not it. It's just what sparks the crying for people like John Boehner. Yeah, there's also a second thing. How contorted is your face when you're crying? <laughs> and there John Boehner is king, man, he's like, <laughs> Uh, like, hold on, dude, hold on. I don't know what else is going on. Anyway, so the reason he cries so much, we think this is conventional wisdom in DC, okay? Uh, he's a huge drinker. And Aww. so when you know how it is, when you drink, that's when you're like, oh, you're my best friend, man. I always love you. Not me. But he's like that perpetually, perpetually. And so he's legendary three martini lunch dude. And uh. so that's why, like, at the drop of a hat, he's like, I love. Wait, did I say that on air? <laughs> right? I guess he's not getting coming back into Republican politics, by the way, which is the heart of the story, which we're going to get to. In yes, a second. yes. Let me just note, though, not everyone gets emotional when they're drunk. Like people mm -hmm. react to alcohol in different ways, right? So he gets like that, you, allegedly. You get combative. No, I don't. I actually, <laughs> if I'm in, it depends on my state of mind as I'm drinking. If I'm it does. upset about something, I should not drink, right? Agreed. If I'm perfectly fine and I'm having cocktails with a friend, then I have a good time. No, you do. Yeah. Uh, you also have an excellent rose all day uh, mm -hmm. uh, version of your drinking. Yeah. Uh, I'm a super fun drunk. Yeah, um, no, he is, definitely. <laughs> I mean, I saw you at my wedding. You were jumping up and down like a lunatic on the dance floor. <laughs> all right, so let's get to uh, the meat of the matter, okay? so. What did he have to say about Nancy Pelosi? First of all, what is this event about? They were unveiling Nancy Pelosi's portrait, okay? Mm, uh, this so, is so important to the elites. So nothing important really. Uh, it's so, like the least relevant thing to the American people. But in Washington, since they're obsessed with status and elites, yes. they're like, oh, this is such a big moment. Madam Speaker is having her painting unveiled. I do declare. But, but but why? So, do what do they do with the painting? They, they put it up somewhere in the house usually. Okay. Anyway, so let's hear more from John Boehner's speech about Pelosi. Uh, Madam Speaker, you and I have disagreed politically on many things over the years, but we were never disagreeable to each other. As you might have heard me say before, 
You can disagree without being disagreeable. Uh, you've been incredibly effective as the leader of your caucus. You know, the younger generation today has a saying, game recognizes game. And the fact of the matter is, no other speaker of the House in the modern era, era Republican or Democrat, has wielded, wielded the gavel with such authority or with such consistent results. Well, let's just say you're one tough cookie. And when the moment called for us to rise above politics and stand together as colleagues, I was witness to this on multiple occasions, from war funding to the economy and certainly to the financial crisis of 2008. No, I love that he brought up war funding and the economy, okay? Because birds of a feather flock together. And when it comes to corporate Democrats and corporate Republicans, they are definitely in cahoots, especially on policies having to do with those two issues, foreign policy and the economy. I just love the illusion of disagreement, right? Like, yeah. oh yeah, you know, we really had our battles in the house, you know, but we rose above it. I'm sure you did. I'm sure uh, your corporate donors helped you guys out quite a bit with that. Yeah, so when he says she's been incredibly effective, that's true. Uh, but is it f on behalf of you guys? No, of course not. She's been incredibly effective at serving her donors, just like John Bader has been incredibly effective at serving his donors. Oh, coincidentally, they're the same donors. And that's why game recognizes game. Uh, when uh, John Maynard was the Speaker of the House, he took tons of uh, bribes. The, the press calls it campaign contributions. Do you know that John Boehner once, he got in a tiny bit of trouble, which was nothing, right? Because right before they were voting on a tobacco bill, he started sent, giving tobacco checks from lobbyists, tobacco lobbyists, handing them out on the floor of the House right before the vote. He's mm -hmm. like, here's $10,000, here's 1,000, here's 2,000. Now everybody vote the right way, because I, I just bribed you, literally in front of everyone, okay? That's who John Boehner is, that's his game. And Nancy Pelosi does it behind the scenes, but does the same exact thing, okay? Why, she, why was she Speaker of the House for that long? Because she raised the most money for the Democrats. Fact, she raised nearly a billion dollars, mostly from incredibly wealthy folks and corporations. And so when he talked about the specifics, Anna's right, one was war funding. <laughs> so you must be so proud, Nancy Pelosi. She is. You're, John Boehner is giving a weepy speech about how much you love defense contractors. Mm -hmm. And he said about when we did the right thing about the economy in 2008. What was the quote unquote right thing? When they bail out the big banks. Yep. So Boehner and Pelosi, look at that, magically agreed. When there was a crisis, let's shovel all of your hard earned tax dollars into the richest bankers in the world. Game recognizes game. Meanwhile, Washington will lie to you and tell you Nancy Pelosi was a master legislator. She was a hero. Look at all the things she got passed. Bain is right. The things that mattered, she got all the defense, con defense bills passed. She got all the banker bills passed. Mm -hmm. She got every corporate pork thing passed. When they, you, they're they forced to answer, hey, what did she ever get passed for the American people? They're like, uh, uh, oh, Obamacare, which was originally Romney care written by the Heritage Foundation, a right wing think tank, and she had a super majority. Wow, I didn't know she was that good at legislating, okay? And she also, of course, was part of the Democratic leadership that killed the public option while pretending to be in favor of it. So, That's right, yep. So now let's also just address, in my opinion, the part of the speech that should be getting a lot more attention because John Boehner doesn't even realize how creepy he can be. He said this out loud in the context of this speech. So let's watch. In 2011, when, uh, uh, when I became speaker and you handed me the gavel in the House chamber, I decided, uh, why not? I'm gonna give you a big kiss. Well, two things happened. First, the speaker like backed away. <laughs> and I thought to myself, as if there's nobody watching, I can't let her rebuff me. So I kind of moved in and made sure I <laughs> planted that kiss on her, right? That's not good. Well, it's Anna, when you're famous, they just let you do it. No, I, I mean, heard from another Republican. Oh. <laughs> Okay, so we actually have the video of that moment. 
Luckily, it doesn't look as bad as you described, but it's still creepy, so let's watch. God bless you, Speaker Boehner. That right there is American politics. But New York Times, NPR, and CNN will tell you they have huge differences, big differences. Mm -hmm. And Boehner bad, but Pelosi, a god, a saint, and say, oh, a portrait of a saint was unveiled today. Like it's a big effing deal. By the way, as the Republican Speaker of the House, John Boehner was notoriously against marijuana legalization. And then when he left politics and entered the, you know, in like private companies and stuff, uh, he decided to pursue a career in uh, marijuana. As long as it pays the bills, man. <laughs> By the way, is marijuana making him cry? I don't know, he's been crying for a long time, so it's probably the martini. Do the marijuana instead, you'll feel better.